Welcome into another episode of the Bellhaven Football Coaches Show. I'm Kenneth Nash. Joining me, as always, head football coach Blaine McCorkle. Coach, final show of the year. Thanks for taking the time. You bet. Thanks a lot. The Blazers are coming off an impressive 8-2 and two season this year, historic season, uh, where they finished second in the USA South, 6-2 and two in conference play, set all kinds of records, uh, all kind of historic notes. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about that today. I've even got some papers because the sheer volume of records and historic marks that you all set, uh, I can't remember them all. So we're going to look at paper uh, so we can go and kind of talk through all of them. But uh, before we get into all of that, I want to kind of get your thoughts on the season overall. Uh, like I said, 8-2, and two, most wins in program history. You finished second in the USA South in your first year. Uh, it was an incredible year. I know it didn't quite end the way you wanted it to, uh, but as you kind of look back a couple of weeks removed, 10 games uh, of really, really impressive football, what were your thoughts on the year? Well, there's definitely a lot to be proud of. There, there's no doubt about that. And then <clears throat> what our kids showed up and did this year was uh, nothing short of incredible. You know, the, the, the volume of school records you mentioned uh, that we broke, most importantly being eight wins in a season, yeah. has never been done here. Um, the enthusiasm around the program was like never we, we've never seen before, so that was pretty exciting. Um, and there's just a lot to, to build on, you know, as much success as there was, and as uh, you know, the fact that we reached heights that have never been reached yeah. before, we're not stopping there. You know, we want to yeah. keep going and keep pushing forward because at the end of the day, we lost two games, and that's too many. You know, yeah. so we've got work to do this off season with recruiting and in the weight room and spring practice and. Uh, hopefully take it to the next step, which is uh, winning a conference championship and playing in the postseason. Yeah, what was the kind of the, the feeling from your players? I know that, uh, and I'm guessing you've probably done your exit meetings by this point. What was kind of the vibe you got from your team um, after they had a couple of days to kind of reset and move on from the end of the season to kind of look back, especially some of the guys that have been around this program for a long time? Yeah, it's really interesting. and It was really encouraging for me. I did have exit meetings with everybody in the program, uh, staff included, support staff yeah. included. So I spent about five days at my desk over there just – uh, grinding out meetings from, yeah. <laughs> from 6.30 in the morning until about 7 or 8 o'clock at night. Yeah. And uh, it was really encouraging for me uh, leading this program to hear their voices and where they are. Uh, I think as a whole, the guys are really, really proud of what they did, um, but very unfulfilled and unsatisfied. Yeah. And that's exactly what I could hope for uh, is for them to all be wanting and searching for more. Yeah. You know, um, for the seniors leaving, uh, they were in a little bit different place. Uh, you know, they were some of them a little emotional, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, as they should be. Um, because they were a group of seniors, 11 of them, that came here and went 2-8 and eight and left 8-2. Yeah. And that's remarkable. You know, that would be hard to find that level of turnaround at any level of football anywhere. So um, they've got a lot to be proud of, and those 11 seniors will leave here um, knowing that they're the ones that were the catalyst for hopefully uh, putting Bellhaven football where it is, and then it'll never Absolutely. go back. Yeah, uh, we talked about this was a historic season. We talked a lot about history this year. 25th anniversary team. Uh, it was an incredible homecoming. Uh, had some a couple of players, former players, inducted into the Bellhaven Athletics Hall of Fame. Uh, but it was a year where you set a lot of single season records as a program. Uh, you had 2,703 rushing yards. That was the fourth most in the nation. Um, and I think a few of those teams ahead of you were triple option teams, yeah. which all they did was run the ball. They need an asterisk. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, that, that's a program record for a single season. Obliterates your record from last year. Um, you guys ran the ball really well 30 rushing touchdowns on the year you averaged almost seven yards of play 6.8 that's a record 383 points scored uh we can go on and on touchdown scored pats made uh, on offense your offense was historic for Bellhaven. um can you talk about what you saw in growth this year even from last year where you really set new records last year and you just broke them all again this year yeah, what's really cool about all those <clears throat> records that you mentioned is they were done in a 10-game season where a lot of those records were previously set in 11-game seasons yeah. when we were an NAIA program. Yeah. So that's pretty cool and uh, something that our guys can really be proud of. You know, uh, records and stats are simply that. They're on paper and they're fun to talk about. The, the most important one, obviously, is eight wins. That's what yeah. we were most proud of. Um, but we do have a really talented group of guys right now. Uh, that are all back. Yeah. You know, offensively, we really lose one starter. You lose three seniors. Uh, our, both of our centers, Charlie Ballou and Cole Gaddy, split time together, so that's really yeah. one spot that you lose. Then you lose Ben Owens, who's a backup quarterback but a captain yeah. and an incredible leader on our team. You know, even though he didn't have the snaps, uh, he's going to be a big loss for us from the culture dynamic, the leadership aspect that he brought to our program. Uh, but in theory, every one of those offensive records you just mentioned, every one of those guys is back. Yeah. So how exciting is that? Now they get another spring, another summer, another preseason, another winter with Coach Wood mm -hmm. in the weight room to improve on what they did. 
Um, so hopefully we can uh, have a repeat performance with some of those records next year um, and just add two more wins to it. Yeah, it was an incredible offensive display. Your defense was really good too this year. 37 sacks in a season uh, for, for some quick math people out there. That's just under four sacks a game, which is incredible. Uh, that was a program record. You also broke up 63 passes. Uh, we'll talk about TJ Hersey a little bit because he set a single season record for individual pass breakups. Um, but your defense was, was impressive this year. And then special teams, an area you've talked about a lot is complimentary football. You blocked 10 kicks this year. That's the most in the country. Uh, you had six block punts, which was uh, second in the country. Um, your special teams unit was really, really impressive and uh, they broke records which you had set last year in terms of block kicks. Yeah, speaking on the special teams part of it first, you know, that's done with, with three things, attitude, effort, and execution. And mm -hmm. we start every special teams meeting every day with asking the question, you know, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to dominate in special teams. Yeah. That's what you have to do. That is a third of the game. And you do that with a great attitude, great effort, great execution. And the things that Coach Vaughn puts in place, uh, our kids get excited about it. They execute it and they, they put out great effort. Uh, so that allowed us to do some really good things in the special teams, um, blocking a lot of kicks. And a lot of people have kind of asked me in the last couple of weeks since the season's over, what are you doing in your block kicks? Well, our guys just play hard. Yeah. You know, we're not doing anything magical. It's yeah. nothing that anybody else doesn't do. Uh, they just do what they're coached to do, and they do it to the best of their ability. And then you mentioned the defensive records with the sacks. <clears throat> you know, that's incredible. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously we lose – Connor Fordham, who's the Defensive Player of the Year in the conference, we'll talk more about that in a minute, uh, who, who had a handful of those, but Carlton Brown, Eli Webb, yeah. uh, Wildman, Cody McCraney, yeah. Chance Taylor, all those guys, Jaheim Burkett, are back, you yeah. know, and some of them with a couple years to play. So um, there's no reason, again, just like we talked the offense, that we shouldn't be able to be just as productive in the future if we stay on track and keep working the way they have. Yeah, let's stick with the team records. Uh, these are single game records that you set this year for a program. You had 492 yards rushing against Greensboro, 709 yards of total offense against Greensboro. Uh, that was probably one of the most dominant displays I think you had this year. You put up more points later on in the season, but that game against Greensboro, uh, you were you were throwing the ball, you were running the ball, and you really were able to do whatever you wanted on offense. Was that, to you, one of the peaks of the season was seeing – um, just how dominant your offensive unit was against that Greensboro team. It was. And, you know, one of the things that I'm probably most proud of with the Greensboro performance as we look back is that's a two-day road trip to get there. It's a noon kickoff. You're getting up early. You're in a different time zone. Yeah. Um, and then you're playing a team that hadn't had a lot of success, yeah. you know, at the time. So it's easy uh, in that situation for your guys to relax a little bit, and they didn't. They yeah. did exactly what we asked them to do that week. Uh, they showed up with a lot of energy, and they just exploded. Yeah. And it was really fun to watch. Uh, on that day up there at Greensboro, you know, 492 yards rushing, I think broke the school record that day by about 100 yards. Yeah, and yeah. what's cool is we didn't break that record again. That record stays, but we broke what would have been the previous record the next two weeks, I yeah, believe. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty cool to see us maintain that level of play uh, for a few weeks. And then 709 yards, I've, I haven't done that in 25 years. I may never do that again. <laughs> um, so that was pretty yeah. pretty cool thing to do. Um, and one of the things about that, you mentioned 492 yards of rushing. We also threw, threw three touchdown passes in the first mm -hmm. half. So it was also a very balanced attack uh, as we went. So, uh, you know, sometimes people see our offense and the rushing numbers, and they think that's who we are. But there were a few games through the season, like Greensboro, like LaGrange, uh, where we got big leads at the half. And I think we only threw two passes in the second half yeah. just because you didn't want to put it at 80. There's yeah. no reason to keep throwing the ball and pad our stats. They're going to come as they did. So yeah. uh, exciting stuff. Yeah, that was really impressive. And then LaGrange, I think, is the other game that probably sticks out in people's minds. Uh, you scored 70 points, which tied the program record for points in a single game. Seven touchdowns, or uh, probably 10 touchdowns, uh, also ties a single game record. Uh, and then you averaged, this is probably the most important, uh, impressive of it all, 10.2 yards per yeah. play against LaGrange. That's a first down every time you snap the ball, practically. Uh, can you talk about that game? It was weird. It was a Friday night game. You had to move the game up. Um, questions about what was the energy going to be like in the stadium? What was the energy going to be like for your players? Just having to shift the game up and uh, they go out and put up one of the most impressive offensive displays Bellhaven's ever had. Yeah, that's another one, uh, kind of like the Greensboro one, where we really challenged our guys to bring their own energy because yeah. we did have to move it to Friday night. You're out of your routine. There wasn't the crowd that we normally have for a home game. Um, so how are you going to respond? And, yeah. and those two performances, I think, really speak to the character of our kids and who they are. And what it shows is our guys just love playing football, yeah. you know, and, and it doesn't matter where we are, what time we're playing, what day of the week we're playing. They just love being together and playing, and they're going to bring energy and go execute. So that was really exciting to see. Uh, the LaGrange game, again, just like I mentioned about Greensboro, everybody talks about our rushing attack. You know, the 10 touchdowns we had, we threw five and we ran for five. Mm -hmm. You know, so that, yeah. that is balance. You know, that is well balanced. It just plays out that you don't need to keep throwing touchdown passes as yeah. you go. So, um, 
good for our guys and the way they executed. Yeah, you had some individuals who put together some incredible seasons as well. Uh, Kobe Blunt, he was kind of a theme throughout the season, uh, one of the best running backs in the country, frankly. Uh, he ran for uh, 1,172 yards. That's a single-season rushing record. He had 17 rushing touchdowns. That's a single-season rushing uh, touchdown record. Uh, can you talk about Kobe Blunt? And we're going to talk about him a little bit later on as well as we kind of dive into individuals. But uh, uh, him and running behind that offensive line uh, put together uh, a really good rushing performance this season. And that's hard to do because Bell Evans had some stellar running backs in the past. Bradley Foley, Johnny Horn, just to name a couple. Uh, you, the list goes on, though. Yeah, Colby Blunt, just an exceptional talent, as we know. Um, one thing that's kind of neat about Colby is he's an exceptional person, too. You know, he's always mm -hmm. got a smile on his face. You know, if he might score an 80-yard touchdown, come off smiling and all shucks. You know, that was yeah. fun. Um, but uh, really excited about what he did. You know, he answered the bell this year in a big way. A year ago, Brad Foley graduated. Um, Brad was the school's all-time leading rusher, held every record in the book just about. Uh, so we really challenged Colby to step up. Hey, now it's your turn. You know, next man up. Uh, he put on about 20 pounds in the offseason. He got his body right, uh, and he answered the call. I mean, yeah. he, he showed up and he performed in a big way every single week. Um, and, you know, the last game of the year, he was able to get the single season uh, rushing record, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, broke the career touchdown record, and he's still got at least 10 games to play, hopefully yeah. more. Yeah. Um, so he's going to obliterate that record before yeah. he's done. Um, and I think this coming season, when he's a senior, he'll have, I think, about 1,076. I did the math the other day. I think uh, yards to uh, pass up Brad's all time rushing record. So uh, just an exceptional talent, exceptional football player, um, great team guy, mm -hmm. you know, fun to be around. And uh, we're excited that he's back for another year. Yeah, he, he set an individual a couple of individual records this year for single season. Uh, T.J. Hersey set another one. He broke his own pass breakups record. He set that back in 2019. Uh, he had 16 this year, which is his single season record. Um, I think he sometimes goes under the radar when you look at the defense yeah. because uh, he's not a huge interceptions guy. Uh, he's what a lot of people classify as an undersized corner, yeah. uh, but he's a ball hockey. He plays physical, uh, and he now is is got the top two single season marks for pass breakups. Yeah, the only thing undersized about T.J. Hersey is his uniform. Yeah, you know, I mean, he, he is—he uh, plays like he's six six, two thirty out yeah. there, and uh, he's got the heart of a lion, and he's a lot of fun to watch and coach. He's just quiet, goes to work, and does go a little bit under noticed. You know, he broke his own uh, single season pass breakup record. I think he finished third or fourth in the nation in pass breakups himself. Yeah, uh, and wasn't on the all conference team. Yeah, you know, because a lot of times that's just interceptions and big plays, whatever. But. Yeah. Uh, he started 35 games here. He's got another year to go, so he'll be back. Uh, we'll lose Faison Locke at the other corner. We'll lose Corey Tolliver in the secondary. Um, but uh, TJ will be the guy to kind of take the lead in that yep. group uh, on the back end uh, coming up the 2023 season. Yeah, he was really impressive. And then to wrap up the single season records for individuals, Constantine Hans, is, he's a, in his second year, he broke his own record that he set his freshman year in PATs in a single season. He had 51 this year. He's got 90 for his career. Uh, you talk a lot about him and that uh, if he doesn't break every kicking record uh, you guys have got, uh, he's doing it wrong because he's going to have a chance uh, to kick a lot this year and uh, or kick a lot in his career, and he did this year. Uh, and he was pretty much automatic all year. Yeah, he did a great job. Uh, 51 PATs on the season. Uh, credit to our offense for giving him opportunities yep. and credit for him for taking advantage of the opportunities. You know, So uh, he's got two years to go. Yep. He's already got all those records. Uh, so he's another one that will completely obliterate all that before his career is over. Um, and really proud about what he's done. You know, Daniel Krosky was our kickoff guy this year. Yep. He graduated. Daniel did an outstanding job for us. Uh, and now we'll count on Constantine to take over both roles. Mm -hmm. So that's the challenge for him going forward is to uh, get a little bit more deep ball leg strength for the kickoffs and things like that. And uh, he'll be a complete specialist for us before it's over. Yeah, Constantine's a, a lot of fun to watch. And having a kicker uh, that is consistent as him is a huge deal uh, in college football. Uh, some of the single game stuff that was broken this year, and, and I told you it was a lot. Uh, we'll start with Devin Daniels. He had an 86-yard touchdown run against Southwestern. That is the longest rush in uh, program history. Um, he's won another one that's probably a little bit undervalued, underrated uh, from an outside the program perspective because Colby Blunt takes a lot of those headlines. Devin Daniels, and, and uh, you can go through that entire room with Deontay Galishaw and, and all of them. Uh, that's an incredible unit, but Devin Daniels is an explosive runner. Yeah, when 86 yards against Southwestern for the longest single run in school history actually broke Colby's record yeah. that he set the year before. Uh, we've given Colby a hard time about that. Devin scored on his. Colby did not. Yes. Colby got right down, <laughs> or, or he would still have that record. So uh, good for Devin. Devin's a really talented, tough, unselfish football player. Um, and the only thing that he's got going against him was Colby Blunt's in front of him. Yeah. You know, I mean, he 
you know, if something happened to Colby, Devin and Deontay could start every game for us and we'd be just fine. So yeah. good for us that we've got a deep, deep room of running backs and numerous guys behind that. C.J. Yeah. Jackson, Caleb Galishaw, uh, just to name a few. Um, so we're in a really good spot for a long time at running back. Yeah, it's a, it's a great unit, one we talked about a lot this year. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about Kobe real quick. Four rushing touchdowns against Greensboro, which is a single-game record. That was the game in which he had 709 yards rushing, 492 yards uh, on the ground. He only played one play in the second half. That was a rushing touchdown to break the record. Uh, and then so basically he essentially did this in one half of play, four rushing touchdowns in one half of play plus you know, one carry. Yeah, great performance that day for him. We talked about the Greensboro game a minute ago. Uh, and one of the best things about that is he went out there and played so well so fast, our entire team did, that it gave a lot of guys a chance to get some reps in that game. Uh, so, yeah, that was, that was quite a day for him, too. Yeah, and then Constantine Hansis had 10 PATs against LaGrange. Uh, 10 of his 51 came against LaGrange, uh, which tied a program record. Yep. Defensively, Carlton Brown uh, had probably one of the single greatest defensive performances uh, we've seen, especially from a pass rusher uh, at Bellhaven. That was against Southwestern, six tackles for loss four sacks, which are both single game records. I think he caught a little bit more attention from other teams and game planning and blocking, and that freed up other people. But uh, when he's on, and if you don't have a plan for him, he's gonna wreck your game, and that's what he did against Southwestern. Yeah, he is explosive, you yeah. know. And he had another great year. Uh, the Southwestern game specifically that you're mentioning was one of the single best performances I've ever seen by a defensive lineman. I mean, yeah. he just flat showed up to play. I think that was a game that he kind of had circled uh, on his personal calendar for a long time. A year ago, we lost to Southwestern. Carlton didn't handle some things well in that game. He knew that. Uh, and I think he had something to prove uh, to himself, to us as a program. Um, and to his credit, he did it. So that was yeah. a, a fun night to watch. Yeah. yeah, and then Corey Tolliver to round out the, the single game stats, had two picks against NC Wesleyan. Uh, he's one that you are losing. He's a player you're losing this year. Um, he's going to be a big loss. He's yeah. a physical safety, uh, but he's also got really impressive ball skills. He does, and the thing that he has that maybe people don't recognize as much is he's got incredible leadership skills. Mm -hmm. You know, Corey was one of our captains this year that we'll lose. He's played a lot of football back there. I remember when Corey was a freshman, uh, when times were a little leaner here, yeah. uh, we were walking off the field after a game one time, and he's down in the end zone with his family, and I remember kind of – uh, patting him in the chest and saying, before you leave, you'll be an all-conference player and a captain, and that's exactly what he was. And yeah. He wasn't playing any snaps then. He was just a young player, but we could kind of see for a long time that he had a lot of upside in a lot of areas. And yeah. one thing we'll miss most about Corey uh, is his leadership, um, his vocal presence on the field. You know, that free safety sometimes is like a quarterback back there, yeah. uh, getting things adjusted, getting guys lined up. So he will definitely be missed. When he got isolated a lot uh, at times, he would be the single high safety, but he brings a lot of energy to your oh, defense yeah. as well. Uh, he's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, we'll wrap up with the record portion with career records, because uh, you had a few. I uh, mentioned Colby Blunt uh, has already set this program record for uh, career rushing touchdowns. Uh, we expect that he'll continue to add to that. He had a rushing touchdown, I believe, in every single game this season, right. uh, which was really, really impressive. Uh, he also has now moved into second all-time in career rushing yards of 2,140 passing to great Johnny Horn. Uh, he's going to try to chase, chase down uh, Brad Foley. He's got a little bit of ways to go, um, but he's obviously, we can talk about him real quick, just what he's done over his career. It's just incredible. Yeah, his, his career has been impressive. Started way back in 2019 when he was the ASC in our previous conference, uh, freshman of the year yeah. that year, and really didn't have great numbers, but I think people recognized his upside yeah. you know, and what he was going to become, and that's exactly what he's done. Uh, you know, He is going to be chasing Brad's all-time rushing record this year and nobody will be more excited for him to break it than Brad Foley. You yeah. know, there's a lot of clips on film, Brad now being a part of our coaching staff where Colby breaks a long run or makes a play and you see Brad just running down the sideline, just fired mm -hmm. up for him. So really neat to see that part of the culture of our program come out um, and no doubt he'll be able to get that done this coming fall. Yeah, Colby's impressive. We mentioned Constantine. He's up to 90 PATs in his career, which is second all time. That's just in two seasons. Uh, he's going to run away with that record over the next couple of years for Bellhaven. Uh, Carlton Brown has moved into third all time in tackles for loss, 47. Connor Fordham, he had nearly 20 tackles in his last game yeah. here at Bellhaven. Incredible. Probably one of the best performances I've seen uh, as from an individual. He was everywhere. He's now fourth all time in tackles for lost trails, just uh, Carlton Brown. He finished his career fourth with 44, and then he moves in the top five in total tackles with 259, I believe, right behind Alvin Vaughn right, yeah. uh, on your coaching staff. But uh, Connor, uh, let's talk about him real quick. Uh, yeah. One of the, the leaders of your program. Uh, he stuck with it from the beginning uh, of your time here uh, through the end of his playing career. And um, we'll talk about his recognitions uh, on the year, but he finished his career right rightly so, uh, as, as one of the best players to put on the green and gold. Yeah, it was pretty neat. We knew that to, to get in the top five all time, I think he needed 36 tackles with two games to yeah. go. And I remember the team meeting at Brevard the night before, uh, before game nine, 
kind of going through that list of where we were and the things we'd accomplished, just to let everybody know exactly where we were, kind of joking with Connor, hey, that's 36 in two games, that's a lot. Yeah. Well, he goes out there and has 18 the next yeah. day, then the next week he has 20, 22, whatever yeah. it was, yeah. to put himself in fifth. So he, he's a guy that if Connor Fordham makes up his mind to do something, he's probably going to do it. And, you yeah. know, for him to do that in those last two games was something I've never seen before. It was just uh, you always talk to your seniors about, hey, soak up every minute because when it's over, it's over. He is one guy that soaked up every minute of his career before it was over. Mm -hmm. um, passionate, just vocal, physical, um, and just everything that you want a middle linebacker or a football player to be, he was it. And, you know, we talk a lot to our team, and we have no problem telling the, our guys this. You know, I tell the guys all the time, I play favorites as a coach. Any coach that tells you he doesn't play favorites, he's lying. He does. <laughs> yeah. Well, my favorites are the ones that work hard, they're accountable, they make plays, they do what they're supposed to do, and they're coachable. Yeah. It's their job to become my favorite. Yeah. You know, that's their job as a player. Um, Connor Fordham is one of my favorites, no question. I mean, I, and I, yeah, I will say that for as, if I coach for 50 more years, he will always be one of my favorites because he embodies everything that that is. You know, yeah. we, we tell our recruits when they come in, if they meet Connor, if you look up Bellhaven football player in the dictionary, his picture needs to be there yeah. because he is it. Um, and the way he left this place uh, is pretty admirable. Yeah, and then uh, to wrap up the career records, Carlton Brown, 24 and a half sacks. He's now third all time in career sacks. Uh, no surprise there. He, he, he wrecks uh, offenses on a regular basis. And then TJ Hersey has 29 pass breakups over his last two years. Uh, I don't know that we have an official stat record for that because pass breakups have not been tracked. Uh, but recently, uh, but I think it's safe to say he probably holds the record there. Yeah, just put him in there. yeah well, yeah, I think it's probably yeah. TJ Hersey. He has the two highest single season records. Uh, probably safe bet that he has the career record. Uh, that kind of wraps up the records portion, but uh, you got a lot of postseason honors as well, uh, as you would assume being the second team in the conference. Um, offensively, uh, you had Kendrion Boatman and David Turner. Uh, they were recognized. Kendrion Boatman probably was the first team, and Colby Blunt was sec uh, first team as well. And then we'll talk about David Turner in a second. We talked about Colby a lot. Kendrion Boatman, he anchors the right Right side of that offensive line, yeah. uh, which was one of the best, really probably in the country this year. Let's talk about Kendrion, who's who's been a mainstay on that offensive line. Yeah, postseason honors as we're filming this today are still coming out. Yeah. You know, all region I would think would come out in the next few days. Yeah. All American will probably come out in the next week or so. Uh, if Kendrion Boatman is not an All American at this level, I don't know who is. Yeah. Because the performance that he puts on the field every week is phenomenal. You know, he he anchors our offensive line at that right tackle spot. And he is dominant. Yeah. Um, and he's one of those guys, kind of like we mentioned Connor a minute ago, it's, it's kind of never enough for him. He's always looking to yeah. improve. He's always looking to get better. He does everything we ask him. He was one of our captains as well this year, who's returning, probably be a captain again next year. Uh, and just had an, an unbelievable year uh, there at right tackle, as our entire offensive line did. Yeah, and then David Turner, who plays right next to him uh, at right guard, he was recognized on the second team offense. Um, he was an all-region player a year ago. Uh, interior offensive linemen tend to fly yeah. under the radar a little yeah. bit. Uh, David Turner is a mean right guard, yes. and uh, it's really easy to run over that right side of that offensive yeah. line. Yeah, he lines up right there next to Kendry and Boatman, and that is as good a uh, one-two punch at right guard, right tackle as, as yeah. you'll find. Uh, you know, I mentioned a minute ago talking about Connor being one of my favorites. Uh, my dad has his favorites too. My dad's <laughs> favorite player on the team is probably David Turner yeah. <laughs> because he is old school, tough, yeah. nasty, physical. Uh, when he puts his hand in the ground, he just wants to hurt something, yeah. you know, and, and he usually does. Um, so uh, with second team all conference this year, probably a little light in my, my opinion. Yeah. I don't know who's better. Yeah. Um, we'll find out next fall, I guess. Yeah. Uh, but that will give him a lot of motivation uh, going into the off season. But uh, uh, glad he's back for two more years. So really exciting future for for him as well. Yeah, we mentioned Kobe Blunt was a first team offensive player as well. No surprise there. Uh, he's going to continue to rake up uh, accolades through his Bellhaven career. Uh, Constantine Hansis was recognized uh, as part of special teams units yeah. um, along with Andrew Norton. We don't talk about Andrew Norton very much. Uh, he is really impressive punter. He has a huge right leg, and uh, he did a lot for y'all in terms of pinning people inside the 20, inside the 10. He really helped you switch field at times and, and can maintain control that you had over games. Yeah, one thing that was interesting about Andrew Norton this year is we were worried that he wouldn't qualify for some postseason honors because he may not have enough numbers punting yeah. because our offense was so explosive. Yeah. So where our offense being so explosive really helps Constantine get opportunities, it hurts Norton's opportunities yeah. as a punter. You know, uh, But he, he does have a big leg, and he can place the ball. He, he gets it in the air. He gives our coverage team a chance to get down there. Uh, you know, one specific there at Methodist late in the game, he pinned it down there on the on the one yard line. Yeah. Wyatt Beck uh, goes down there, and makes a great play, play yeah. and that really sealed the game for us. And uh, I was excited to see him 
uh, be an all-conference player. Uh, he's got one more year to go. He wants to be a special teams coordinator in his future. Yep. Um, he, he is a punter, but he's a football player. Yep. I mean, we always joke with him, we got the toughest punter in America. You know, <laughs> and, and he may have the best hair for any punter, too. So. I think he does, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but, uh, but he's great, and we're excited he's back, and he's a big part of our leadership as well as a punter. So, uh, neat, neat kid. Yeah, you mentioned that he may not have enough stats to qualify. If you look in the record book, he's third all-time in punt yardage and in punts, and he rapidly got into the top five. And over the past couple of years, he's made marginal gains right. on the people ahead of him, uh, not really getting the reps, which is probably a good thing. It's uh, a good thing for our, t- our team. <laughs> And, yeah. and you know what? He's probably as excited about that as anybody yeah. because at the end of the day, Andrew Norton just wants to win. And yeah. we joke all the time, hey, you may not get in today because we're not punting, and he's, he is okay with it. Yeah. And on the defensive side of the ball, you had a handful of guys recognized. No surprise, Connor Fordham, Carlton Brown, Eli Webb, Faison Locke, Corey Tolliver. Uh, we talked about some of those. Let's talk about Faison real quick, and then we can talk about Eli Webb. He was also Defensive Rookie of the Year. But uh, Faison's a player that uh, you're going to lose in your program this year. Yeah. Uh, he is a ball hawking corner. Uh, he believes he's a wide receiver. I think at times yeah. he likes running those routes for the wide receiver and uh, coming up and getting his hands on the ball. Uh, he's made some impressive plays. I go back to the pick six he had against Louisiana College a couple of years ago in right. a game that was an unbelievable finish to seal it. Um, but phase unlock is a lockdown corner and among the best that I've seen uh, at this level. Yeah, he, he is. Uh, I've never coached a game at Bellhaven where he wasn't our starting corner. Yeah. So he, he started every game that he's been here since I've been here in his career. So we started 45. Uh, games and has just done an unbelievable job and will be tremendously missed. You know, sometimes he's kind of quiet in the team meetings and on the field at practice, stuff like that. Uh, he just goes to work and does his job. You yeah. know, he loves football. He loves the corner position, studies it. He can tell you every corner in the NFL right now, you yeah. know. Um, so neat, neat guy that we're going to miss. Um, and somebody's got some big shoes to fill, and that will be some interesting competition in the spring. Yeah, Faison's uh, been a ton of fun to watch in my time at Bellhaven. Uh, every t- every year I've been here, he's been a starting corner for every game that I've seen. So, uh, yeah, he's a ton of fun to watch. Eli Webb, we talked a lot about him this year. We said if he's, you said if he's not the defensive rookie of the year uh, in the conference, I don't know who is. He was a defensive rookie of the year, uh, led the conference in sacks. Uh, he's an unbelievable player as a freshman. Uh, can you talk about what it means to have a guy walk in day one and be able to put up the numbers and produce the level he did? Yeah, that was as impressive a rookie season as you'll see at any level. And uh, you know what Eli did was really, really impressive. Uh, he kind of goes out there with that all shucks attitude and just gets after it and plays hard. Yeah. And he'll run stuff down from behind. Um, he never gives up on a play. Um, he's got a lot of energy, um, and he's going to be fun to watch around here for the next yep. three years. And I think it's you know a guy like Eli is really neat. He's kind of what this program is and should be built on. You know, he he's exactly where he belongs uh, in terms of level of play academic, school fit, team culture, um, and I think for a long time this is going to be a really, really good home for him, and uh, we'll look up one day and put him in the Hall of Fame, there's no doubt about that, because he's a, yeah. he's a lot of fun and a uh, neat kid to be around. Yeah, he is a lot of fun, especially when he's diving for two extra yards That's on a right. blocked punt right. uh, to get you from the 42 to the yeah. 40. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he, he plays the game the way that it's meant to be played. Yeah. You know, He's an old school throwback player. That's what our team is. That's what our culture yeah. is. That's what we've built this thing on. Uh, so he's exactly what we're looking for in the recruiting world. When we go out recruiting, we're looking for Eli Webb all the time. And uh, we'll see if we can go find a whole bunch more of him here in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, if you do, you're going to have a whole, whole heck of right. a lot of That's success right. moving forward. Uh, yeah, he was cool to watch because as the year went on, he got more and more reps and he continued to produce at such a high level. Uh, and then uh, Connor Ford, and we've talked about him already, but Defensive Player of the Year, he was a Connerly nominee for, uh, for Bellhaven. Um, so he got to be recognized alongside some of the best players in the state um, from you know FBS Division I uh, through Division Two and Division III. Um, Connor is is he's a guy that you're going to miss. How do you replace a defensive player of the year and Connor Lee a nominee like Connor Fordham? Well, you don't. Yeah, you don't. Um, and I think if you try to replace Connor Fordham, uh, you're going to you're going to fail every time. Yeah. You know. Uh, so the challenge for the young guys coming up is okay. You go be the best version of you you can be. You know, Landry Huddleston right now is penciled in to be the starting Mike linebacker when we go into spring practice. It's his job to keep it. It's his job to improve and get better, and he can, um, but do it with his own personality, his mm-hmm. own way. Um, and I think Landry will be a really explosive football player in the future for us uh, as well. But you don't really replace that guy. You just, as a whole, you have to continue to get better um, until the next Connor Fordham pops up. Yeah. You know. But I think Landry's going to do a great job. Um, you know, and talk about some of the accolades of Connor. You know, we talked about him a good bit a minute ago and, and what he was to this team, the type of football player he was, was the defensive player of the year, phenomenal honor, was the Connor Lee finalist uh, from Bellhaven, which, which went out last night to a kid from Ole Miss. Um, and you know, that thing is, is fan base voting, we mm-hmm. know that. 
it's a little bit skewed to the SEC schools. It always will be, uh, but I would argue that there's no college football player in the state of Mississippi that would had a bigger impact on his individual team than Connor Fordham did on yeah. us here at Bellhaven. So pretty cool. You know, that banquet was to be held last night. They had a big storm. It got canceled. Uh, so we weren't going to not honor that moment for Connor. So we had a chance, my wife and I and Beth Van Zandt from our athletic department, to take Connor and his wife, he's married, yeah. uh, out to dinner along with Ben Owens, one of his good friends who actually bought a ticket to the banquet. So we had our own celebration last night, and it was a lot of fun to sit with those guys and reminisce uh, about their careers and, and what's next and how we got to where we are. So uh, those guys will be missed. Yeah, real quick, I want to talk about, you were also given the Team Sportsmanship Award. Uh, this is an award that you've gotten now in two conferences, the ASC and the USA South. Uh, I know it definitely doesn't reflect in terms of play, um, but I think it's an award that means a lot to your program. Uh, you know, you're, you're all about, you're aggressive on the field, uh, you go out and do everything you can to win the game, um, but your character is in incredibly important, and, and you talk about how you want your players to be men of character, uh, and I think that's reflected in the fact that now they've been uh, awarded the Sportsmanship Award in two different conferences. Can you talk about real quick what it means for your program and moving forward to guys coming in to see that standard being set? Yeah, we, we talk a lot about about having a five-star culture in our program, and that's there's a lot that goes into that, you know. And some people talk about you know team culture and character and those things. It's just recruiting spill. It's something to put on social media. We try to make it real here, you yeah. know, because at the end of the day, I've said it before on the show, I believe God called me here to Bellhaven to grow men, um, and that's that's what we're trying to do. Uh, so to win that thing three of the last four years in two different conferences is pretty cool. A lot of times that award will go to a team that maybe struggles on the field yeah. or they're just a bunch of nice guys out there doing the best they mm -hmm. can. Uh, that's not who we want to be. You know, sometimes our guys will kind of giggle or snicker at that award a little bit because they kind of don't want it, yeah. you know, because uh, we are a tough, physical, hard-nosed, aggressive football team. But I do think we do it the right way, and we don't ever want to lose the sight that uh, we are trying to grow men. Mm -hmm. uh, this campus, this university, and our football team is a ministry. Yeah. Uh, we're not going to lose sight of that. So every time that we play somebody, uh, we want to knock you on your tail, but then we're going to pick you up and pat you on the head and do it again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, let's just say, man, those are the toughest, nice guys I've ever met in my life. Yeah. You know, we, we want players that dads are proud of them while the game's going on and moms are proud of them on Sunday morning. That's yeah. kind of what we're looking for. <laughs> so. Um, so we're excited about that. That's a great honor. Uh, and to do it while you're scoring 70 points, 59 points, whatever, uh, that, that kind of speaks volume to the type of young man we have in our program. Yeah, it really is impressive. Uh, real quick, to wrap up, uh, where do you go from here? Uh, eight and two, you've now had back-to-back -back, uh, seasons where you set the program record in terms of winning percentage this year in terms of wins. Um, but you'll be the first to admit, and, and everybody that's in this this office building, everybody that uh, is in that locker room will tell you, uh, you're nowhere near where you want to be. So right. where do you go from here as a program getting ready this winter and into the spring to prep for next fall? Well, there, there's a famous movie quote that says, second place is first loser. Yeah. You know, And uh, we have no desire to stay second place. Yeah. Uh, so we keep moving forward. That's where we want to go. You know, And there's a lot more for this program to achieve. First thing we've got to do is go on the road and recruit and replace the Connor Fordham's, the Faison Locks the Charlie Ballews, the Corey Tollivers, and all of those guys that we lost this year uh, because those are some big holes yeah. to fill. Uh, we feel like we've got a good group coming back. We'll have 21 seniors next year and 22 juniors. That's never happened here, yeah. so that's really exciting. We will truly be a uh, junior, senior-led team for the first time in my time here. Uh, so recruiting's going to be big. Yeah. We've got to go get the exact right guys, not too many of them, the right guys, mm -hmm. um, to come in here and, and be a part of our culture and grow and, and be talented and, and help us keep it going because it's one thing to turn a program around and start winning games. It's another thing to stay there, yeah. and that's what we want to do is, is stay there and, and keep building on it. So. Uh, that's our first focus. Then when the guys get back after Christmas, they'll be in the weight room with Coach Wood having a really good time yep. uh, for about two months. And then spring practice will start February 28th, and we'll start uh, seeing what the 2020, 2023 version of the yep. Blazers is going to look like. Yep. Our spring game, I think, is scheduled for April 1st. So we'll have a big day that day, and hopefully everybody can come out yep. and have a good time and get a peek at what it's going to look like. Yeah, well, it was a very impressive season. I, I thoroughly enjoyed uh, covering the team and doing the show with you this year. So I uh, appreciate that and I uh, appreciate you taking the time every week to do the show. I know the people that watch this uh, love it and uh, love staying informed on Bellhaven football. Um, but, Coach, congratulations on a great year. I know that there's more coming from Bellhaven Athletics and Bellhaven football, uh, but we always appreciate your time. You bet. Thank you, Kenneth, for taking time every week to put this show together. Thank you to Rick Negron from our film school yep. for coming over and setting up his equipment and doing this and his group of students every week. And, uh, Absolutely. It's been a great way for us to sell our program and, and we have gotten a lot of feedback and uh, a lot of credit to you so thank you very much absolutely thanks for tuning in uh we'll be back next year we'll probably be back in the spring for a little spring practice recap uh, and then as always in the year every week tune in catch up on bellhaven football thanks for tuning in